Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're going to talk about movies here on Movies We Can Learn From. We're going to talk about a movie, uh, actually a serial, was done, I guess it's this year, called Jury Duty. And at first you think that's a high, there it is, a highly legal kind of experience, but it's not. It's really off the wall. <laughs> George Payson joins me today. For our regular, you know, uh, experience here reviewing movies, and George is going to uh, welcome to the show. George, George is going to um, give us the environment of this movie. It's not conventional. This series basically, ostensibly, shows a number of people in, in on a jury in a court, and there's a twist at the end, and I'll explain that in a minute. And there's it's basically comedic. Because some of the things that go on are just absolutely hilarious. You'll be rolling in your chair, right? Body functions, um, defecation, uh, urination, <laughs> uh, all kind of crazy things going on, people falling. And, but it's a comedic kind of thing. There's a lot of twists in this, too. And in the end, you get surprised that everyone, I, you know, is basically acting, and there's only one person there who is real. And uh, he was recruited from an ad, you know, that to be on a jury, but he didn't know that everybody else is an actor. So, so basically, it gets really, really. I mean, there's eight episodes, and the last episode is basically just showing how the director. Um, and the assistant director put this whole thing together. Totally brilliant the way they did this, right? Totally brilliant. So um, that's the gist of it. And we can get into all the specific scenes, you know, with all the different play. A very diverse crowd, which would be like when I was on jury duty, you have a very diverse crowd in LA, you know, even here when I was on jury duty. So it's a diverse crowd of different backgrounds, different personalities. <laughs> And it, it really works very well. And I really enjoyed this series. It's just make, I, so many times I fell out of my chair. So I'll let Jay take over and, and get into some of the specifics. And then I'll get back and maybe add some things to what Jay has to say. I had the same experience, George. I was cracking up. My, my wife thought I was really losing it uh, because this was, this was so funny. And it was, you know, it was, Lots of nuance, you know, lot, you had to watch it to catch the strange kind of humor they had. Um, I, let me give you my reactions, okay? Number one is, um, yeah, they put an ad in the paper and, and uh, they, uh, they got 2,500 responses uh, to join the jury, but they only selected this one guy. Uh, and, and he had no clue that everybody else was an actor, including the judge. And, and uh, he had no idea that in the next room, beside the, quote, courtroom in this, in this courthouse building, there were like 50 technicians uh, who had planted cameras everywhere. And they made a movie out of every one of these camera shots. And then, you know, all the computers and the cameras and the, and the high tech. And, and they were cracking up because they were, enjoying it as much as you enjoyed it and I enjoyed it. So it was uh, it was kind of a cinema real kind of thing. Uh, and I kept thinking of uh, Emil Zola, you know, who in the 19th century, he wrote the human experiment kind of books. And he would take a character and put the character in a completely untenable situation. And, and then he would play with the character and see how the character reacted. And that's what this was. Somebody must have read Emil Zola in order to conceive of this. They spent a lot of money on this. They had a lot of people, and they did a lot. Uh, it was really like, uh, you know, a high-production movie. But it wasn't. It was all in the courtroom and, and in the jury waiting room and a deliberation room and so forth. Um, to, go, to go a little further with it, this guy um, became the... <laughs> He became the foreman of the jury. And it was, it was flawed in that sense because the foreman of the jury 
is generally chosen by the members of the jury. But but they, they needed to have this guy, uh, tall Howie guy, you recall his name? Is it, is, Gladden. What is it? Is the, his real name is Ronald Gladden. Well, that was it was his real name and it was his name in the movie. It yes. was his name on the credits. It's really anyway. So um he he was like the, the target of all this. And he was the Emil Zola character. They were changing, changing things. They were setting him up on a million kind of subtle practical jokes. And the actors who played the other jurors and the and the witnesses and the parties and the lawyers were really good, but they were all completely kooky. The whole thing was kooky. And this, this poor guy, Ron, he, he, he had had a lot of experience as a juror. So he didn't know what to expect. He didn't know that judges do not select four, four men or four women um, of the jury. It's the jury selects them. But the, the judge really, the, the director really had to get Ron appointed as foreman because that was part of the way they were doing this. So they sort of stretched it and they and they, they complimented him on the way he ordered lunch <laughs> for, the, for the other members of the jury. They said, you did such a really good job. The judge has decided to appoint you as the foreman of, of the jury. It was so absurd. And the people on the jury, you're right. I mean, they were completely off the wall. But it was a slice of Americana. You know, this was in Los Angeles, and they were it was a very diverse group. I mean, no two of them were like like each other. They they all came from different backgrounds, they all played different roles. They were all as kooky as could be. And they were actors, so they could do it. It made you want to be there too. It made you want to try your acting skills and, and see if you could fool poor Ron into believing you were a legitimate juror. But some of the gags they did, and he had no idea. He was he, he was like swinging from pillar to post, trying to figure out what these people were doing, and thinking, "Hey, wait, this is a jury. It's very serious." But it wasn't serious at all. And so what you get is, um, in case you have never been on the inside of a jury or uh, the deliberations by a jury uh, and you thought that it was serious, this movie kind of fakes you out. It, it, and what it tells you is, no, it's just ordinary people doing ordinary things. They're all a little crazy. And, and um, you know, that's the way it works in this American system of justice. And, you know, in a funny way, it was the rule of law. It was the jury system, and everyone played a role consistent with that. Uh, what I mean is they, they all respected the system. They respected the judge. They respected each other, even though they were very, very, very diverse in their way of thinking and doing things and reacting. So I thought there were a lot of lessons in this. That's why I suggested it to you. And the lessons about the jury, about the court system, about humanity, about Los Angeles. Um, about how you know people treat each other. It was uh, really um, a kind of introspective, introspective you know examination of how people conduct themselves in this Emil Zola esque kind of world. I really enjoyed it from pillar to post, from the beginning to the end. And let's not talk about the final, uh, the final episode until we get to the end of our discussion. That was. That that knocked your socks off is what happened in that one. So some of the you know bizarre things, for example, this very kooky geeky guy, uh, the, the short fellow with the red hair, he comes in with this pair of crutches, which are somehow attached to his okole, and and when he wants to sit down, <laughs> he sits down on crutches, and all and his people are tested with. What kind of absurdity is this? He can walk. He doesn't need the crutches. They help him sit. <laughs> and he explains to everybody why he needs them, but it's not an explanation at all. <laughs> so you say, <he's, laughs> you know, they're very kind to him. They don't dump on him. They treat him with respect, even though he's obviously, or at least apparently, out of his mind. <laughs> and, 
And, and there's, there's a lesson in all of that, don't you think? James Marston, who's an actor, you know, well-known actor, he plays himself too. And, and he's playing a role, you know, and he plays that role really good. And he fools Ronald Glenn, and he and Ronald Glenn sort of get close, you know, and get to be buddies, right? And the, the whole thing is that at the end, as you said, the last scene was, is when Ronald Gladden is right in the seventh scene, uh, seventh episode, they, uh, he, they, at the end of it, they tell him what's going on. And in the eighth episode, as you said, they, they get into the particulars of that. But um, I mean, even the, 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 there was the, the, the defecation in the toilet was a prop, you know? It was <laughs> chocolate, it was chocolate. It's chocolate. And I thought it was pretty tacky though. At the time I was watching this thing, I said, my God, they're not really doing this. But it was a gag, and everything was a gag. And at the end, you find out that it was a huge piece of chocolate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And they had to put a wire to keep it in the top. So ridiculous, the whole thing. I mean, but, you, but I mean, what was the other show we saw that was a lot of body, body things that you were laughing about, Jay? Um, there was another one we reviewed. Uh, where there's a lot of uh, oh, it was the Kam Kaminsky uh, show, the Kaminsky thing. Remember when uh, uh, Michael Douglas was playing this aging uh, actor, uh, acting coach? Yeah, and into a lot of that too. That was the one. Like, we really got good reviews. I mean, I, a lot of people must, for some reason, really got in. I think Watch Alan Arkin was in there for a while, wasn't he? Yeah, he died. Uh, he, he, he died recently. Yeah. He was good. He was he's a really good actor. So so the thing is, um, there was that that prop and the few other props, as you said, the crutches on, on that crazy guy, and and so many different little scenes that are just had me falling out of my chair. Really hilarious, hilarious stuff. And um You're making me laugh just talking about yeah, it. And then you had this elderly woman, Barbara. And, and and she kept falling asleep. As you well know, at our age, sometimes you fall asleep. I, I eat and I fall asleep. And and she was hilarious too. And she played that role to a T. And then I'm trying to think, and then you had, you know, the way they played some of the if it minority people, you know, I mean, it was it was, I mean, just really, I mean, it might have been a little bit of a caricature of of the F uh, Hispanic woman. For sure, this, uh, this guy, he was actually a, a senior analyst for the University of California, but yeah. he played the role of, um, of a, uh, <laughs> an immigrant Korean. Right. right. And, he, yeah. and he, he, he taught himself to speak very slowly, very softly. It wasn't him at all. He was acting. No. But it was very, they were playing this, this Korean game. Exactly. And he, uh, you know, he he, uh, he he failed at the game. It was all set up, and and he gave Ron a a, a big win, and told him he had, and Ron didn't understand the game at all, and and he told Ron, you you just won two thousand dollars from me. I got to pay you off now. <laughs> in the in the jury room, they were gambling already. And Ron was so nice. He says, no, no, I, I'm not going to take you $2,000. The whole thing, this is slapstick comedy, the whole thing. And as yeah. you said, that guy, brilliant analyst from the university, I think University of Irvine, California, Irvine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He played an immigrant Korean newly arrived, you know, with language difficulty, which was just a whole <laughs> act, you know. I mean, it, 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 it caricatures, you know. So, I mean, the whole thing. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of some of the other other things, uh, you know, who held out at the end? There was one person who held out, one uh, guy, tall guy, you know, white guy. And and the reason is because he wasn't telling them his marriage was on the rocks. And he sort of, this was like, they became friends and he didn't want to leave the jury because he sort of felt his company. He didn't want to go home. He didn't want to go home. He he, to go home. He, he, and this is, I mean, he's acting, of course, you have to remember that. He said he didn't want to go home and his wife was really mean to him and he wanted to hang out with the boys and girls in the jury for as long as he possibly could because they made him feel good. So he, he kept saying that the guy was liable, that Trevor, whatever his name was, uh, you know, yeah. the, 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 the long haired guy. You know, they sh I mean, we didn't get into this. It seems that he collapsed in the factory 
and urinated on himself and defecated on himself. They got they get into this right in the first scenes, you know, which is really hilarious, right? And then this this um, Ronald Gladden, pretty sharp him is this uh, African American guy who also very sharp. And they were looking around. They saw they went and visually saw the factory, and they actually visited the factory. And they saw that there were marks on the ground. So it sort of justified what Trevor was saying that he passed out because of chemical, you know, uh, exposure, right? So the whole thing. I mean, the, the, right the whole here, case was absolutely off the wall. You know, you, the jury is trying to understand what the evidence is, and really, there was no evidence. They were trying to understand what the claim was, and there was no claim. The plaintiff, <laughs> the plaintiff who played that part, whoever the writer was, tall, thin, American, you know, um, um, howly American woman, elegant, right? She played that role to a team, you know, spoiled. Spoiled rich, you know, silver spoon in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the, the thing is that, that her, her attorney was a real attorney. And Trevo, the the, the 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 defendant's attorney was a real attorney. I mean, these, these people were actors, but they were all they also had law degrees and, and had passed the bar and had previously practiced law, you know. So it, whoever did the casting too for this. Well, you know, you you you, you live in America, where and L.A., where you have a, a lot of diversity, and there were no two people on the jury alike, none, and they came from all walks of life and all mental conditions, if I may. Which is real, because I've been on a jury, and you did get you get people from all, you know, even L.A. and here, I've been on a you get people from all walks of life, right? So that yeah. was realistic, you know, like as you said in the previously. They did their homework, the, 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 the writer, the producer, that they knew what a jury was like, and, and they pictured that up to a certain point, except for the fact that uh, it's all a big joke. You know, it's a comedy. It's all not real. So, I, I mean, this was just phenomenal. Can you think of anything else that I'm not thinking of any other scenes? It was the toilet scene. <laughs> you remember the toilet scene? Oh, yeah, that was what I was told, the chocolate. <laughs> the chocolate. I mean that that scene. I thought I, I love the old Jewish lady who fell asleep all the oh, time. Barbara, yeah, she so was, I was not sleeping; I was resting my eyes. You know, <laughs> she was, she was good. She, and, you know, she's acting. You know, I mean, that, Barbara or something. Burger is her real name. Uh, and they set him up. They set him up because one of the guys uh, who, <laughs> well, they had all these phony relationships. You know, they they got to talk about their wives and girlfriends and oh, all yeah, the, yeah. all the. So they set him, they set this guy up to make a racist comment. Exactly. And they try and try to blame Ron on the racist comment. Right. So that he would get <laughs> thrown off the jury. He, you know, he was a nerdy guy, you know, real tight church, church, like they used to talk about the church lady. He was the church guy, real, you know, repressed, sexually repressed. And, and then there's this this young woman who's got the hots for him. Plus, they go to bed with him. <laughs> right. and, and they go they go to her. her the, the jury is uh, what do you call it locked up, and uh, so she, <laughs> you have love affairs popping up between the various members of the jury. And this woman plays the. Uh, God, she was funny. She plays the role of this hot babe, and and she invites him. <laughs> they invites a number of people to her room. Right, right. Because he doesn't want seduce to seduce them. He doesn't want to have sex, so they get on the bed. They put him on top of her, you know, um, you know, to have sex, and he doesn't want to have sex. So they're jumping on the bed. I think it was Ron and uh, someone else. Oh, and James Marsden to, to to sort of get him to to have intercourse with this woman, you know, have sex with him. The, the the whole thing was slapstick comedy, and you can't help but. You know, in this day and age, as I've said, so much sadness in the world. To to see something like this, it just gets you away from all the bullshit that's going on everywhere, even here in Hawaii. You know, there's so much shit going on. So that that's basically, you know. Well, it was it was funny, but it was also, I thought it was also educational. It was educational about the human condition. Yes. Um, and these um, these people, you know, did a really good job in acting their very strange roles. And you know, if you if you didn't realize what was going on, you would believe it. You would believe this is really happening. This is a real jury. It had to be quick uh, to spot that that 
problem. <laughs> but it does show, Jay, the operation of a jury. And that judge, he played the role. Oh, he was he was fabulous. He was so believe was he's an attorney too. He he was a you know, he's he's an he's a was a, a retired attorney. So he knows exactly. I mean, it was so real. I mean, he really I mean you he, you would not think if you ever saw him that he wasn't a judge. And, and for Ronald, that was good because the judge is the most important person. And then the bailiff that over, over, uh, have you said uh, black? Yeah, man? yeah. She oh, was, she she was oh, terrific. She was terrific. <laughs> they, I mean, they casted this. Very oh, oh, they went out for these meals because the jury was locked up. You know, they wound up with uh, going out for these meals, and they have to have a an inspection of the factory. It was completely useless. Is that <laughs> real? Is, is that real? To does that, in the does that go on in, in real? I mean, Jay, Jay, you were you're an attorney, right? Does that go on in real life? Oh, it happens. It could happen. Out to eat. But what what exactly it. was you know they were they snooping around in a factory, uh, completely unsupervised? I don't think that would happen. <laughs> and then they wind up they wind up in this um, in this uh, restaurant bar affair. Yeah. On, on the way back from the factory and, and get good and drunk, all of them. Exactly. When he gets <laughs> drunk, right? Oh my God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, let's let's go to the bottom line. I the the final part of this movie yeah, is yeah. such a revelation. I, it 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 came as a surprise to me. I didn't realize what was going on. I, I suspected there was something fishy about, about what was happening here. But at the very end, he is the foreman. He rules in favor of the, this long-haired, greasy-looking defendant, uh, who's he's just a real loser. Okay, he rules in favor, and he and he causes the jury to go unanimous on that decision. Uh, he stands up and announces it to the judge. The judge says, um, "You know, can you bring your jury verdict form over? I would like to uh, like I'd like you to be right here next to me. Just have a seat, Ron." And and then the judge, who was so good, explains to him that, uh, you know, I told you at the outset that um, this is my last trial. But what I didn't mention is it's also my first trial. <laughs> and oh, in fact, in fact, it isn't a trial. It isn't a court. This isn't a real jury. All the people around, you know, there's like 20, 25 people in the courtroom when you add them all up. Um, all these people, they're all actors, Ron, and Ron is, is having a conniption. What? What? What did you say to me? And, and finally, at the very end, he says, you know, you did a good job. You showed kindness and consideration. You were, you were uh, sympathetic to all the people around you. You used your analytical skills to, to understand the, quote, evidence that you were seeing. Um, you found things that other people didn't find. You did a great job on the jury, and 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 you know you you made this work, and we are so happy that we recruited you for this, and and for this we are going to award you a hundred thousand dollars, and the guy almost fainted. He had no idea that it was phony, but worse than that, he had no idea that they were going to give him money. <laughs> and he was so good natured. I mean, even when he was shocked. Every time something happened, even at this end, he was very good natured. And that's why they picked him, you know, because they could check that that was his personality, that he's really very flexible, good natured person. So, yeah, so that was the eighth. And then they showed, as you said, the other room with all the technicians and what was going on. And, and just, well, there must have been 12, 12 or 14 technicians in the oh, more. The room was full of all kinds of high tech equipment, and they had uh, hidden cameras everywhere. So the result is that when they put this movie together, they were taking shots from every angle you can imagine. And I th he knew they were going to make a documentary, but he had no idea how many cameras were involved and how sophisticated this all was. Yeah. And it's and similar to other reviews we've done where they sh actually show um, how the movie is made. This was this eighth episode shows basically all the behind the scenes things that where movies are made, you know, because when I was doing movies for Coppola, Francis Ford Coppola, you would actually see all the way the camera, the director, the, you know, with his camera and then the, 
the other people, you know, on staff and stuff. So you get to learn. Really a learning experience, Jay. This was a learning experience. Well, it was also a technology experience because they they were putting cameras everywhere. The cameras in the corner of the, the ceiling, cameras, uh, you know, behind what appeared to be a bookcase, uh, cameras, you know, and every time there was a piece of glass, there was a camera behind it. Um, and and, the, and the, sh the shooting was very good. You know, the quality, production quality was very good. He had no idea. We had no idea how much effort they put into it. And I say they spent a lot of money. They had a lot of people, a lot of thoughtful, um, you know, comedy preparation for it. So the question I ask you is, you know, a jury and a legal proceeding, you know, we are so fascinated with that. Look, look what happens with Trump, for example. You know, everybody's interested in, and the press doesn't give us a break. They talking about it all day and all night about you know the law and the jury and and the and the prosecutor. We all taking a, a PhD in 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 the jury jury process, and maybe that's why or one of the reasons why it was so funny. But what I what I'm asking you though is this this kind of um, you know secret camera thing. It's is it going to happen again? Would it happen in another context? Could somebody make a movie like this with hidden cameras um, again? I mean, it was always appealing to me as a as a kid when I saw that you know there was a, a show about the hidden camera, yeah. and uh, uh, I don't know if you remember uh, Alan Hunt, candid, 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 candid camera, yeah, and it was really funny, and I always watched it. Uh, I don't want to tell you some of my memories about the funny stories, but. It was it was really interesting to see human nature play out. In fact, I'm going to tell you one story. So it's a mailbox. It's the most famous of all Alan Alan Funt's uh, uh, candid camera segments. It's a mailbox on a street corner in a, in a crowded city, maybe New York. And um, this guy's walking past the mailbox, and the mailbox calls out to him, "Excuse me, sir, sir, could you come over? I need to talk to you." And the guy turns around, there's nobody there, it's the mailbox. The mailbox is talking to him. So he goes over, he's curious. The mailbox says, you know, we're having a test here. And we just want to see if, you know, the, mail, uh, the people like to have talking mailboxes. What do you think? Do you like this? I says, yeah, this is really interesting. And, and the, mailbox says, <laughs> the mailbox says, you see that woman over there, the one in the blue coat? You know, I wonder, could you get her to come over here too? Because I'd like to talk to her and see if she feels the same way you do. So the guy goes, you know, down the other side of the sidewalk and he grabs this woman in the blue coat and he brings the woman over to the mailbox. <laughs> and he says, the mailbox wants to talk to you. Silence. Crickets. Not a sound. Oh, God. So she thought he was absolutely crazy. <laughs> right? So good. I mean, I, I watched that show all the time as, as a, in, when it was on and as a kid, too. And I love that show. Is you know some of the reality TV that you have now is somewhat similar. You know they're actually filming real life, and it's not acting. You know it's just of course some of it is is staged. You know Kardashian's craziness, but I mean you know it's staged, but it's the reality of life of what what. Well, what? It's, it's putting people. It's the Emil Zola thing. It's putting people in strange and sometimes very stressful situations and and how they react you know the the nature of uh, the candid nature <laughs> like, like candid camera of, of of human you know nature and psychology you know and that's what this was about so I, I don't really go for anything like the apprentice you know or any of that reality tv that trump made his bones on years ago i mean i i never watched that because i felt that it was dishonest Ooh, he was abusive uh, on that show. I mean, he was really abusive. He, is, he was abusive, and, and there was no fun to, to watch it. Just, but it, but, but a, a thing like this, where they were kind to each other, a thing like this, where they portrayed you know, the diversity of our, of our system and our society, that was worthwhile. So I guess my question is, do you think this could happen in another context? Would it be as funny? Yes, I think so depending on how they put the whole thing together. Yeah, it, it, it could be really funny in, in many different contexts. You know, um, 
other than a jury, you know, there's all kind of options, you know. So yeah, I, I would, I think you could do that, yeah. yeah. I admired the people also for the acting. Uh, I, I saw them in a kind of, uh, you know, uh, impromptu acting experience and they were all bouncing off each other. And you said, gee, you gotta have a lot of talent to be able to do that, to react to, you know, changing circumstances and unpredictable things happening all around them. So. Uh, it was it was an interesting view of acting and how people can do well at it. They must anyway, have... I think we got to go. Um, why don't you uh, uh, give me your rating on this strange and crazy movie? Ten. <laughs> really? <laughs> I just loved it. It, I, I, it, it. I mean, every episode, including the eighth episode, just slapstick comedy, just super, just super duper duper. So I, I'll give it a 10, not a 10 plus, but a 10. I would, I would come down a, a little lower than that only because of the chocolate problem. <laughs> I really didn't like that. <laughs> My God, they're making me watch this. But, um, you know, everything else about it was so funny. And it was, um, slapstick is, is too heavy a word for it, I think. I, th I thought it was elegant humor. And very sophisticated, very well, uh, you know, organized and written and and played. So I'd give it an almost ten. Okay. Well, thank you, George. It's lovely to talk about these movies with you and and to find value in them. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.